Well, today I'm going to make a uh, polishing video with the, uh, so it'll be a two-part video, uh, review slash polishing video with the new uh, Rupes. I think they believe, I believe the part number on this is the LHR 19E. So it's their rotary buffer, it's Rupes. Um, super smooth machine. It's super torquey. I really like it. Uh, one thing I covered in my last video, I said I've been doing it for 25 years. So I have a lot to show people and I feel like this is the one tool that a lot of people are terrified to use. And if you know how to use it, they're unbeatable. Uh, you can, they work extremely quickly and you can get a lot of stuff leveled with these machines fairly fast. So I guess the first rule of a buffer is you just want to be careful, uh, wear safety equipment, that kind of stuff. Glasses, of course, is what I should be wearing. But, um, and the long and short of it is this machine runs clockwise. So it runs clockwise. And as long as you're and going basically right into the brass tacks, as long as you're, as long as this machine's rotating off the panel, uh, and so basically the way I look at a buffer is I cut the machine in half. And so from here forward, as long as you're, as long as this part of the tool or the pad is actually rotating off the panel, you're in good shape. It's when you have panels that are misaligned and panels like say, for example, if you know this panel stuck out more than this panel and you're polishing this panel, you could potentially burn the edge of this panel. Or if they're sharp panels, um, they're older like this one, it's a 2002, ridden hard, put away wet, rock crawled, so on and so forth. Um, this required a lot of uh, a lot of leveling and a lot of uh, work with a buffer. Uh, it was in pretty rough shape, uh, pretty flat and dull, and uh, had a lot of Colorado pinstriping, so, which is scratches. <laughs> any rate, um, so moving forward, as long as this thing, as long as your polisher, is rotating off the edge, you're in good shape. So I split, so as long as you're the 50% mark forward and it's rolling off the edge, you'll be fine. It's when you start to come back like this. So if you were to hold a machine like this and say, especially like on a sharper edge and it's coming into the panel, it's gonna, the, the wool will grab the edge and it'll burn it. But as long as you, you know, you, you're basically following certain guidelines. One thing I recommend, and I covered in a different video, is that if you basically, when I look at this door, if I'm about to polish this door, this is how I basically tackle the door. So this piece is a panel right here. This is a panel, this is a panel, this is a panel, and this is a panel. This is super important with a polisher buffer that you never wanna go basically vertically over the body lines. You want to follow a body, you want to follow a panel and then sweep into another panel and then flatten back out again. So for example, you know, you'd follow this line and then polish basically this whole section and then you polish this section, polish this section, this section, so on and so forth. So um, material control is super important. Uh, Basically, I like to work, uh, there's a certain consistency you want on these pads when you're polishing. And you'll, after you polish for a while, you'll feel it. It'll, there'll be a slight drag to it. And that's really what you want. You don't want it too wet. Once they get too wet, then um, it, they don't work too well. And then you want to blow your pads out. Or I like to use multiple pads for per vehicle. So this isn't exactly a Rupes pad. This is a knockoff pad and I had to put a, big, a bigger, basically a bigger backing plate on it as well. The Rupes backing plate that comes with this machine, I believe is a four inch and this is a six inch. So it'd be a four inch with like a five inch pad. And this is actually a six inch with a nine inch pad. This is a standard pad that they use for polishing cars for years. Uh, I actually starting to use the Rupes products, starting to use their pads, they have smaller pads, which I'm finding work better in a lot of ways. Uh, these are pretty cumbersome and they're bulky. And when you're getting, you know, you're having to manipulate the machine and tilt it and angle it in order to get into certain areas uh, with the Rupes pad, 
which I can show you real quick, um, is a phenomenal pad. It's small, and so it gets in all these little areas, especially on a, you know, kind of a smaller SUV like this one. It's a little bit smaller, so I'll show you real quick. So hang tight. This is the uh, Rupes pad right here. So this is a coarse wool polishing pad. So, and then they would have a, a, basically the backing plate would fit right here, which I believe, like I said, is a four inch backing plate. So you can picture that this would work real well. This is dirty, I've already used it, so I'm gonna go with the clean pad just for this video. But uh, I'm using a polish cleaner. And uh, first rule of thumb when you're polishing a car is you always want to, or one of the rules of thumb, is you wanna make sure you shake your material. So these things have a tendency to settle like anything else. And it's like almost anything, coffee creamer, that kind of thing. You want to basically give it a good shake. And uh, I cut my tips at an angle. This is a ketchup bottle. And here's a little trick. I actually put these little uh, beer booties on here. And uh, it makes it nice if you set it on panels like a hood, you don't scratch them. So that's a little trick. Uh, one little trick. So basically there's certain ways to throw the compound on or polish or whatever liquid you're using on the car. Some guys will, you know, spread it like this. Um, I prefer basically flinging it on there or flicking it on there. So it kind of looks like this. And that's how I prefer to do it. I just feel like it, it's, you just give it kind of a nice whip with your wrist and it's pretty easy. Sometimes if you're kind of trying to squeeze it out, it'll fall on the floor, but if you kind of, shake the material and then just kind of whip it on there. That's basically the way I like to do it. So uh, the other important thing with polishing, which is a big thing, is picking up your material. And I was told when I first started getting into auto body that you'll know when you get good at polishing cars when you don't have a lot of compound everywhere else but where you're polishing. And now that I've been polishing for a while, I find that to be true. Long and short of it, when you go to pick up your material, this machine spins clockwise. So if I come into the material this way, it's going to fling it across the car. So essentially, I just want to kind of come and pick it up from right to left, and I'll kind of sweep into it, and I'll kind of angle my pad up and pick them. So they call it picking up your material. Uh, the better you pick up the material, the better, um, the smoother it is, um, less splatter all over the place. So essentially, like I said, and I'll just give you guys kind of a demo of how I polish cars. I feel like I have a lot to teach people and the, the way I could explain it would be easy because a lot of people are terrified of these tools. But if you learn how to use them, they're phenomenal, they're safe, if you know what you're doing. You just have to be careful. You have to watch for things that stick out, especially handles. You know, like I said, if one panel's misaligned and this panel's sitting above this panel and you're polishing this panel, and, uh, you know, say for example, like this, you could potentially tear all the paint off the edge of this. They call it burning the paint. Uh, and you never want to do that. Um, so long and short of it, uh, there's multiple techniques, but arm speed is one. Uh, tool speed is another. If I was just starting out, I would run this machine as low as possible, which would be on the one setting, which with Rupes is 450 OP. Uh, RPMs, which is super low. I think the DeWalt's go to 600, maybe the Makita's go to 600, which they used to go to 1,000. Um, and this machine actually only goes to from 450 RPM to 1,700 RPM. I really, I, I just got this machine. It's, it's pretty much new. I've only used it a couple times. It's, uh, I can't say enough about Rupes in general. I just think they're tremendous products. They're made in Italy, uh, super durable, this thing's torquey. It's just, they're high, high quality machines. Anything from Italy is usually, uh, especially their sports cars. So I'm a huge fan. I have the the buffer, the 15, the 21, the three inch, uh, five or six machines, I guess, total multiples of each. Um, so once again, this isn't exactly a Rupes pad, but I'll be showing you guys today. So long and short of it, you're first starting out polishing. You just want to take it a panel at a time. And take your time. Don't try to rush through it. Just take your time and let the machine do the work. I hold the tool to the panel. I don't put too much pressure on it. 
if you put too much pressure, you could burn things. Um, you just want to let the tool work for you. You could change things like slow your arm speed down, turn your machine speed up. It kind of depends. You're going to have to tailor fit it to you, but this is how I do it. And uh, one of the biggest things is just being super smooth with the machine, being fluid with it. It's like a bal like a ballet or a dance. You know, you you don't want to be rough and and just not very smooth. You want to make it fluid and smooth. I used to paint cars, and it's the same way. It's just nice and smooth. You want to you want to be like almost like a dance. So um, basically, when I first start, I'll pick the pick the compound up or whatever liquid I'm using. Um, the material and then I'll start to run with it work it in the pad and then I'll start to work the panel but let's just say you're new you haven't polished anything or even if you're experienced uh, and you're nervous about it I would just turn the speed down to number one and then just work extremely slow and then if you're working with a slow motor speed you want to work with a slower arm speed if you turn the speed up on the dial for the motor uh, the tool speed then you basically want to match it and move your arm speed a little faster but a lot of it's just practice don't be scared of it try something that's not you know you're, it's not a high dollar car you can try maybe go to a body shop and get a damaged hood and try it on there first or or try it on a piece of crap so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and pick up the materials what they call it and then i'll start to work it in i'll kind of show you guys how i do it uh, it's just like I said, it's pretty. It's actually once you do it, it's pretty easy. But it takes there's a long learning curve to these tools. So here you go. So you can just do it nice and slow. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this pretty quick. I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up as, as well. And then I like to work this machine personally. If between three and four, that's the sweet spot I feel on all their tools. So, once again, you know, you're just basically, I'm coming across, I, I'm rotating off this panel. And where it gets tricky is on your edges, and you know, of course when you first start on all your edges and that kind of stuff. But, uh, take your time, go slow, and then you shouldn't have any problems. You know, just, and if you're worried about it, if you're polishing this panel, and this panel's next to it, obviously, just mask this with some masking tape if you're if you're worried about it. You could mask each panel and do it a panel at a time. So you could mask it here, and then you could mask it here. Obviously, I have it masked here to protect all the rubber trim or whatnot. So uh, long and short of it, yep. So here we go. So I'm the polisher is coming off the panel, and I'm gonna come down here, and it's still going off the panel. Like I said, if this panel was misaligned or stuck out even more, then I would go ahead and mask this off. And it's probably a good idea if you're first starting that you want to do the same thing. So as long as it's, you know, basically rotating off the edge is fine. So you also want to keep the machine as flat as possible. You don't want to, you know, I mean, so there's sometimes you're going to have to manipulate it, especially with the big pad, like I said earlier. But, uh, you know, keep it as basically as flat as possible. Uh, use the whole nine inch pad and not two inches of the pad or three inches of the pad So when I go to pick this up, I'll pick this up real quick And then I'll I'll work this section and uh, then I'll work this section and then this section But basically take your time go slow and work methodically. So here you go So I'm gonna come this way. This will be a little bit, you know, a little advanced trick, but kind of come down like this Pick the, pick the compound up. I'm gonna pick that up too. When I work it in my pad a little bit, and then nice and slow. I mean, I would move a little faster, but I'm just pretending that, you know, I'm first starting out. You know, I got basically set at just about two. When I come down to this body line, I'm going to tilt down just a hair. And just kind of grab the edge of that body line. But, like I said, you're rotating off the panel. So now I'm cutting the machine in half, and now it's rotating off the edge. If I was to sit here like this and polish it like this, it's kind of coming to the edge. Most likely you're not going to burn it here so much as you'll burn it along the edges. You know, things that stick out a lot, especially sharp, sharp body lines. It's, you know, rounded ones, not so much like this, but it's the real sharp, flat ones that you'll smoke the paint right off if you're not careful, if you're not paying attention. So...
you know, say you're picking the speed up a little bit. I'm finding, especially using with these roof head tools, that they're super smooth and that you can get away with using less RPM. Um, so here's kind of how I do it. You know, like I said, as long as this tool is rotating off the edge, you're fine. So I'll kind of tend to put just a hair more pressure on this edge with the top of my buffer. And when I come down along this line, I'll put just a hair of pressure on that edge with the back side of the buffer. I'll look like this. So one thing that I do too, is I, let, I drag the tool. So I basically, I do the same in what I'm painting. If I'm using a heavy material like clear coat or primer, I pretend like there's some pressure on the back side of this buffer and there's resistance. So when I'm slowing down, I drag it and that'll kind of give you an idea of just keeping your machine speed low and then your arm speed low as well. So for example, if you're going, you know, if you're just polishing fairly quickly, like there's no pressure, then you're just, it's just moving and you're not getting a lot done. If you had your tool speed up, it would help, but if you turn your speed down and then just go nice and slow, I feel like that's the best way when you're starting. You're coming up to here, you want to kind of roll down on the edge. Your tools are actually super easy to use once you get the hang of it. Couple years in, you'll be you'll be a pro. But this is essentially how I do it. You know, you can use the same technique. They call this uh, in uh, at least in the random orbital phase, they call it a section pass. Meaning, you know, you come across one, you go across like I call it a ladder technique. You go across the ladder rung, drop down, go across the next rung, drop down, go across the next rung, drop down, go across the next rung, and. Uh, Basically, same thing if I'm polishing uh, with a rotary buffer, random orbital, you know, you basically want to use the ladder technique. So, it's what they call overlap. So, this is pretty much how it looks. Nice and slow. If I'm going to roll in this edge, this is where you can kind of tilt your buffer this way along the edge. Normally I would put some tape around this handle, which I already did, um, to work this section really well. This car was super faded, so it has come back a long way. It looks great. So, yeah, I love these tools. These are awesome. And don't be scared to use a rotary buffer. Just turn your arm speed down. You know, make sure you tape off panels. Have the machine coming off the panel. And uh, if you get good at these, uh, it'll make your life a lot easier and much faster. And you can get really nice jobs there. I, I find them superb for leveling and just getting the foundation, you know, just extremely, you can almost get them fairly scratch free depending on the car. So yeah, one more time. Oh, here we go. So let's say I'm just starting out, you know, you can use a tool speed of one and then just go extremely slow, you know, and just drag, pretend like there's that drag behind the buffer. I right, saw. So. When you come up to the edge, just kind of roll the edge. Come across the top. These things are, <laughs> 450 is incredibly slow. I'll kind of put a little pressure on the back like so. Uh, one more thing real quick, you know, is, is You'll get a feel, like I said earlier, of kind of how wet you want the pad or how, you know, I kind of keep a nice consistency. You'll get the hang of it. And I like to work on more of the drier side so I can, you can constantly add material. If you have compressed air in a tornador, uh, then use that to blow the pad out every panel or two. So once again, I'll just throw a little more on there. So in full speed, it would look like this. I 
I kind of go down the panel, and then uh, towards the edges, I'll put a little bit of pressure on the edge. I'll kind of turn the buffer this way and roll that edge up. And I'm at speed four, or yeah, almost speed four, which I wouldn't go much above it. You could, especially on a big wide open panel. You know, come down here, we'll drop into this groove like that, nice and slow, come back here. Well, that's a lot of it is how how you swing from one panel to the next. So when you go from this panel and drop into this one to this one, it's kind of how you sweep into the pan in and out of the panel, and it just takes time. So yeah, make sure your panel's clean. Uh, alcohol is your best friend. Microfiber towels. These things are, I mean, these are cheap Costco ones, but they work well, uh, especially when they're new. Make sure you tear the tag off them. Is what I do. So yeah, take your time, clean your panel with alcohol before you start. If you know how to use a clay bar, and I'll cover that in a different video, use a clay bar, get the panel prepped, and uh, have at it. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks.